Greetings from my kitchen pulpit. I'm Karen Clymer. It's so good to have you this Friday morning. As I say almost every week, I always look forward to this wonderful time when we get to be together and we're going to be talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In fact, the, the, the title of our devotion today is Give of Your Best to the Master. Give of Your Best to the Master. Oh, and I just know the Lord is going to help us as silver citizens. We never age out. We get to keep working for the Lord. And this is one of the things he's laid on my heart to do. And I'm so glad that he did because I really love doing this. And as silver citizens and from Titus chapter 2, we don't know that we have the authorization. In fact, we have uh, actually our task that we are to do. We are to continue to work for the Lord and to love him and to serve him in whatever capacity that we can. We never age out. We just keep working for the Lord until he calls us home. And our scripture text today is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as for the Lord rather than men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Okay, the scripture is from the New American Standard Bible, 1995. So we, let's get to kneading the bread here. Let's get that done. So we're starting on it, and we're going to see if it's alive. I'm, are you alive in Jesus Christ? I am. I have you prayed to him today. You know, it's, it ought to be, it is a daily thing we should be doing. And all during the day, we're talking to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I need to get my rings off. I forgot that. They're going to be full of flour. Anyway, so there, that's taken care of. So we want to give of our very best to the Master. It's a beautiful song that is written, and I have it here. I, I went ahead and, and copied this song, and I won't read it all. But I, I love this song. It was written, I think, maybe back in the 18, late 1800s by the author was Howard Gross. It said, Give of your best to the Master. And the, the chorus says, Give of your best to the Master. Give to the strength of your youth. Clad in gar salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth. He talks about in the verse here, it said, Give her your best to the match, give her the strength of her use. Throw your soul's, your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he, young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. That's what we're going to talk about today, is give, giving our best. This is something we really need to be doing. Giving our very best. And you know what? Every week when we come... Here. I don't come as, as a know-it-all and that this is what you should do. This is what I want us to be workers together and I want us, I want to be able to help. And so as we can, you know, as we get better acquainted and all, it's where you kind of get to know people. Well, I tell you what, we need help. We need each other. We need to pray and build up each other. So uh, our introduction, I, I've mentioned about the song of Give of Your Best to the Master and it's uh, meant a lot to me and how that it's it's so fitting, that song is so fitting for the message the Lord has laid on my heart about giving of our best. And one of the things I've talked about is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know what he wants to have with us? He wants us to have, it needs to be a really, a true, a close relationship with him. Very personal. And some people say, well, that they think that some people just, you just need to keep it within the confines of your house, those four walls. Oh, no. We want to take it out. We want to love and serve the Lord wherever we go. And that's our way of living. You know, it's not that we're one, one time when we're here, whatever this crowd does, we're this way. This, it's, you love the Lord, and He's the center of our life, and that's what we want it to be all day long. That all, you know, this throughout the day, you know, as you're talking to the Lord, and everything you do, He's your friend. He's right there. You know what it is when you have a good friend sometimes, you maybe don't get to see them very often, and you know how it is, how that, oh, you just dread when the time comes that they have to go or that you have to go and because you want to be with them. Well, the thing about having our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, living in our life as we've come to Him and surrendered our life to Him, and, and we know that He loves us, He is our friend. He wants to be our friend. He's our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He wants to help us. And so all during the day, we're praising Him and thanking Him that He is. You Thank you that you are, that you're my helper, you are my redeemer, and you're going to guide me and direct Lord, what can I do for you? How can I please you today? What is, what is the one or whatever, how many things it is, all during the day, the people that we come into contact with, you know it's important, our response to them. 
and all the days of our life. That we, and we ask ourselves the question, am I fulfilling the plan for my life that the Lord has? And you say, well, I've waited, I'm this many years old and I, I haven't. But start now. This, can be, this will be the best time of your life is to, that you commit to the Lord. That is what is wonderful, to be able to work for Him and to thank the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Jesus Christ, as we come to Him and say, Lord, I want to work for You. What do You do? You give of Your very, very best. And, and that's what I want to do every day. And that's, and it, you know, people say, well, the Bible talks about being perfect. Well, let's talk about being complete. And, you know, we, He completes what we, you know, we work, we do our best, and as we grow, uh, you know, in the Lord, we learn more. But we're, we are not, they're talking about, people think it's got to be that you never make a single mistake. And No, it's not like that. It's just, the Lord knows that we are human, and that's why He is there to help us, to pick us up, not to knock us down, and to criticize us and condemn us, and and, uh, and bludgeon us. That's not the way he does. And you know, I think about I want to give him, so it's, but daily maintenance. I want to use that word maintenance. Daily maintenance. And just think about your car or about your house. What if you never maintained your car? What, what if you never put oil in it? Well, after a while, you're going to have an engine that's going to go out on you. And what if you never filled it up with gasoline? You're going to run out. Or whatever your car runs on. But <laughs> You know, you have to maintain. In a house, if you do not maintain it, you know, it'll start falling apart. And so it, we need not think is that with our spiritual life, that loving the Lord, that we don't have to maintain it. It's a daily thing, and it's a wonderful thing. It's not a, a grudging thing that I say, well, I've got to go in and read my Bible and pray. It's not like that. You know, you don't have to have a separate prayer room like I do, but that's what I wanted. I wanted something away, and I had my maps, and I like to pray with the maps and, and put my hands on places maybe where people live, and I'm praying for them. So, but it's a special personal time that I'm away with the Lord. This, Lord, this is just our time. I, I'm not, not, nothing else is involved here. I'm talking to you, and as I read my Bible, and I ask him, Lord, what can I get out of this today? Help me to really glean. Be a gleaner. Be a gleaner. Every time you're around somebody that loves the Lord and serves Him, be a gleaner. When they are the things, that, the truths and things that they speak, you know, it's just good. And we, that way we can maintain our salvation. If you're new in the Lord, this is the way that we do. Read the Bible every single day. Not just besides our pastor said, just say, well, I've got my three scriptures done, my three chapters. It's not that. Uh, you may... I, don't even, I like personally have a, a Bible reading plan. It's a chronological order, and I like that, and that's what I do. But it's a daily maintenance, and I love it. It's that time. I'm going to go talk to Jesus, and I, I don't want any interruptions if I have them. As soon as uh, some, if I have an, uh, a, the doorbell rings, I'm going back. As soon as I've taken care of the issue, I'm going back into the prayer room. And if interruptions may come, but I'm going back, I will complete my time of talking to the Lord. Okay, what about stewardship, our business? That requires daily maintenance. You know, it's important as children of God that, and I, that we, we, you know, pay, pay our bills, pay them on time if at all possible. And I understand that there are things that happen. People lose jobs. There's uh, uh, many things can happen, sickness and things. But uh, you know what I'm talking about overall, uh, that daily we should be able to be, and, and our relationships with family and others and people that we, with whom we have to do, like in business relationships. It is important, the example that we set. And there again, it's a daily maintenance thing. And you know, I knew a couple that they had the money to pay their bills, they had them, but they would just neglect. They were just, uh, just uh, slothful, and they wouldn't go pay them on time. Well, what happened? They would have to pay a terrible reconnection fee, very expensive. There was no call for that. And as a child of God, it really didn't look good. They had the money. It wasn't that they didn't. And there was no reason not to go and pay the bill. They just neglected to do it. They just, and that was like a monthly thing. Uh, so that it is important that we take care of things that we do. You know, we treat others like we would want them to treat us. If we had a business, what do we want? We want people to be faithful. And especially if they say they're a Christian, we expect, you know, I believe they expect more from us, and in a way, they should. 
And if we see that we cannot, we have something come up, what do we do? As a child of God, we would go and we would say, this is what has happened. Maybe you couldn't pay all of it, but you can pay this much. And then, is there something I can do around it? Do you have some work that I can do? And in today's age, I'm telling you, there's, you know, signs of help wanted nearly everywhere that, everywhere that you go. So I'm thinking in terms of like this, that we present ourselves the way, what would Jesus do? We want to give of our very best to him. And another area that I want to mention is my body is the temple of the Lord. I wanted to read the scripture that I have here. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And that is from Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. And also in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? I think of the importance of, of maintaining our spiritual life, those type of things, and business relationships, but that personal relationship with the Lord. But you know what? I want to work for the Lord as long as I can, and I want to be as healthy as I can. And I've thought a lot about this, and I feel like the Lord has really impressed it on my heart, the importance of taking care of this physical body. And I felt like I had really been neglectful about that. And uh, so I was told by a friend of, of some exercises you could do online, and they're, they're simple, they're not difficult. And I understand there are people who have illnesses and stuff, but many people don't have. And in my case, I was just being neglectful. But I can't tell you how much better that I feel and how uh, that I begin to eat more correctly. But it's there again, it's daily maintenance. Each of these things is daily maintenance. It doesn't just happen. We daily maintain it. And, but I thought about, you know, it says, uh, I thought in the Bible of how when they brought their sacrifice, and that's what the scripture says, that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. You know, you brought your best. I don't want to bring the Lord just nothing, to just my worst. And that here he has given me a body. I'm so thankful that I don't have horrible ailments like some. I wasn't born with a crippling disease like some. And I'm so sorry that they had that. But you know, I've been given much. So I want to take care of it. And it's a daily maintenance. It's made a, made a big, big difference in my life. And I'm so thankful. I feel better. And I, I just, and I want to be able to give of my best to the Master in every area of my life. You know, the main thing that we're needing to ask, am I fulfilling the will of God in my life? As I said, it doesn't matter. You say, well, I wasted this early part of my life. You may have, but you can start now. Ask the Lord to forgive you your sins. I'm going to love, I'm going to love you and serve you all the days of my life. Get into a, a good Bible-believing church. And if you don't, if you don't have a church, if you live anywhere around Elgin, Oklahoma, First Assembly of God is where we attend, and we love it, and we would, would welcome you to come there. But in every phase of my life, I'm finding how important it is. I think of these that when the sacrifice was brought in the Old Testament, they had to bring a sacrifice, and they didn't bring one that was born uh, crippled or one that not that it was an evil animal, but it was that you were bringing it to the Lord, who is who is. He's perfect, and yet you had, but you were to bring the best lamb that you had, or the goat, or whatever it was you were bringing. You brought your best, and I think, well, Lord, here we be, we're presenting ourselves to you, and I want to be at my best for the Lord. Don't you? I want to be at my very best for Him, to love Him. So let's just together. You know, we're in this together, and oh, how I want to help you. I want to be a blessing, and you know, so many people have been a blessing to me. I'm thankful that they have. So let's just give of our best to the Master. And I, I questioned, I thought I, we, we should ask ourselves, have I done the will of the Father today? If I die tonight, will I meet the Savior in peace? And I thought about Stephen when they were stoning him to death just because of his love for Jesus and standing up for him. He was a martyr. And as they were stoning him to death of how that he wasn't... A, in fact, he wasn't screaming and, and saying, uh, I, well, he might have been screaming out of pain, but he wasn't uh, screaming and saying, oh, I wished I hadn't done this, I, I changed my mind. It wasn't that. But, and how that he just, he just was so committed to the Lord, and then 
he, he saw the heavens open and he said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. You know what? That's the thing is that he was ready and he wasn't saying, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I've sinned and I, I, I've not made things right. He didn't have to say, I've got these things in my life and then trying to hide. It wasn't any of that. So that's just daily. We just commit everything to the Lord, everything in our life, anything that's out of order. Lord, I want, it. I want to be in order. I want to love you and serve you with all of my heart. And everywhere we go, we can be an example to others wherever we go and help them and let them see Jesus Christ. Because, you know, that, they don't, he's not here physically, but we are to let him shine through in our lives. So that's what I thought. If I die tonight, will I meet the Savior in peace? We stop and think about that. I want to be ready to meet him. You know, I'm looking forward to the day we get to see him. Can you imagine getting to see Jesus, the one that died on the cross for us? He rose from the dead. And there, and he helps us. The fact the Bible, the scripture tells us that he's at the Father's right hand. There he is. He is praying for us. He's interceding for us. So I tell you what, I want to meet him. I can hardly wait to see him, to meet him, and to thank him and worship him. That's going to be a great day. But remember this, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. That's from Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 in the J.B. Phillips translation. It has been so very good to be with you. We look forward to being with you again next Friday, the Lord willing. And until then, you be blessed, honor the Lord, and serve him with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your spirit. Goodbye.